Project Veritas founder and CEO James O'Keefe is officially out at the outlet after a tumultuous internal row over his leadership. O'Keefe tweeted, since it's already out there, here are my heartfelt remarks to my staff this morning. I need to make clear I have not resigned from the company Project Veritas I founded 13 years ago. I was stripped of my position as CEO and chairman. I came to the PV office today to remove my personal belongings. If you're wondering what's next, stay tuned. The Washington Post reports that PV executives informed some staff on Monday that O'Keefe had issued an ultimatum demanding the board of directors resign as a condition for him to stay. O'Keefe also posted a nearly hour-long video message denying allegations of workplace abuse. Let's watch just some of that. There were tactical disagreements about the boldness of approaches soliciting donations. I was told, and I'm paraphrasing, by asking for X dollars right now, you will prevent 10x dollars down the road. That advice ran contrary to everything I knew to be true in my 13 years of fundraising. Um, but that conflict was even more fundamental and essentially boiled down to this. And my vision, I'm going to paraphrase Howard Rourke, the architect, quote, I don't, have, I don't build in order to have donors. I have donors in order to build. That's what I believed, and I felt like we had a conflict of visions. We measure our success in terms of what we produce, not just in terms of our wallets. That was a pretty fundamental conflict, I felt. The day prior, I had informed him in front of his colleagues that he, if he wasn't willing to follow my lead, he'd be shown the door. I tried to deal with it privately, but I was unsuccessful, and the disagreement boiled over publicly in a staff meeting. The next day, this individual refused to resign, so I fired him. Later that same day, that's Feb Thursday, February 2nd, a few days after the 50 million views Pfizer videos, I was informed by a different officer of Project Veritas that he would go to the board in a few hours from that moment and have an emergency vote to restructure this company, receiving an agenda in my email while I was sitting on an airplane tarmac with the doors closing. The, the meeting was scheduled for the moment that my plane landed in Nashville. It became clear to me in that moment I would be removed from my position at Project Veritas by the time I landed at my destination. So, our mission continues on. I'm not done. The mission will perhaps take on a new name. Yeah, I think maybe it's worth reminding folks what he has been accused of since it didn't feel like at least that portion that we watched was especially responsive mm -hmm to at least the, the accusations that went so viral. So there was a memo uh, that was leaked that uh, detailed a bizarre series of incidents. One, and one, a September uh, 2022 trial against a Democratic consulting firm that O'Keefe later lost. An employee complained that O'Keefe berated them in front of jurors because he needed something to eat. Ultimately, the employee alleged O'Keefe took a sandwich from a heavily pregnant woman and ate it to state his hunger. Quote, I was yelled at in front of jurors because he was hungry. Then he took the eight-month pregnant woman sandwich, the account reads. Um, another instance involved him, apparently, uh, people at Project Veritas getting spat upon. The memo said, quote, rule number one, you can't spit in an employee's face over a tweet. True story, something that apparently happened. happened. The memo authors described O'Keefe as a paranoiac, so fearful of leakers within his organization that he set up at least one mole hunt, complete with private investigators and a lie detector test. Most staffers were reportedly required to return to the group's New York headquarters for an interview with these investigators and their polygraph test, and on and on and on. So, well, and it seems like the main thing that had that had bothered the board was actually not any of that. Mm. Again, those are I don't know that those allegations are true. They were put into memo. The main thing seems to be his use of Project Veritas funds, which include fourteen thousand dollars for a charter flight to meet someone to fix his boat, sixty thousand dollars <laughs> for dance events. $150,000 in black cars. Oh, now that's over 18 months. Maybe that's actually not a lot of money to spend on transportation. Um, money spent on DJ equipment, et cetera. Um, now, look, I don't know. He, he's, a, he's the talent. He's, he is Project Veritas. And he just had a big success, it's like perceived to be a big success, a lot of attention to his organization for the sting he did uh, with respect to that Pfizer employee. Um, it is hard to imagine Project Veritas without him. And well, they're imagining I, I it now. <laughs> they're imagining it now. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I, look, I'm reading, I'm looking at, 
I, I'm looking at the conservative response to this. There's a response mm -hmm. from other conservative people, and it is 100% behind um, James O'Keefe. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to compare it to the Crowder situation, the Crowder's dispute with the Daily Wire, that was at least somewhat split. I have not seen a single person say that Project Veritas did the right thing here. Not a single person. And what I've seen is thunderous denunciation and and assertions that I will not give money to this organization again. I will have nothing to do with this organization. I won't follow this organization. So if they're mad about James O'Keefe and how he spent the funds, like it seems like this move is going to be pretty catastrophic for the organization. But that's my reading of the situation. Well, it does seem like there's a pretty significant inconsistency between him somewhat grandly saying that he fundraises so that he can build, he doesn't build so he can fundraise, at the same time that apparently he is misappropriating thousands of dollars of company funds. I mean, allegedly misappropriating. This is what they say that he did. Yes, allegedly appropriating yeah. thousands of dollars of funds for his own personal projects to take flights, to fix his boat, and to do things that have nothing to do with the goals of Project Veritas. So you can say that it was very successful, the, the Pfizer uh, sting uh, video, that he can get credit for all of those things. But at what point are you also responsible for the fact that you are squandering the gains from those kinds of moments? And how much are you personally responsible I mean, for setting up and enabling cap video captures like the ones that he was lauding? Right, part that of team? what the organization does is stunts and self-promotion and things. So he might argue that he, he was spending this money consistent with the organization's mission to produce video content and other things. To get his boat fixed? Well, I, again, that's what they said he did here. I mean, this is difficult, Rob, because, I, look, I don't have a dog on the side. I barely know who this person is before the story happened. I, this is, you know, kind of not... I don't have a dog in this fight but either. I'm just, sure. I, I'm just evaluating what I, people are saying about it. I, it uh, there have been a lot of accusations made. So we can sit here and say that all of them are false. But if this man is so popular and if he was so such a beneficiary, a benefit to the organization in terms of fundraising, et cetera, either... He was becoming a significant problem from a financial, like a financial liability, because despite being a good fundraiser, he's saying to us here in this video that he actually doesn't want to fundraise as much, or he feels like there's too much pressure to fundraise in the ways that the, the organization or the board wants him to. So it maybe isn't going to do it anymore. At the same time, he's consuming money on the other end. And at the same time, there are these allegations of fairly serious um, bullying and harassing, calling names of the employees that work at Project Veritas. So how much of a, a, well, the public might not care necessarily about what it's like to be a staff member at PV. You know, as someone who cares about the interests of workers, even workers who are doing a job mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily align with my political interests, it does seem a little odd to say we only care about the leadership of a, of a company and not the fact that he's making it um, a toxic workplace environment difficult for everyone else to do their job at Project Veritas. And well, I'm just curious whether there's any. Everyone. It's clearly some people are not happy with his behavior. I don't know that it characterizes everyone who works at the organization. Sure. A significant number of people who say that he routinely subjected them to <laughs> lie detector tests, the threat, the threat that they might be spat on, um, and uh, verbal harassment and beratement on a semi regular basis. What I've not seen any evidence of, although I, I saw a lot of speculation along this lines, a lot of people on the right saying oh, Pfizer got to project. This, was, this is somehow Pfizer's doing. This is somehow revenge by Pfizer, that they have someone embedded in the board or they, or they threaten some law or something. And this is why this action has to be taken. I've not seen any evidence of that whatsoever. Looks to me like a probably textbook case of a creative person not necessarily, not necessarily being equipped with management and business skills. Because I mean, obviously, at some point, he had to, he created a board, structured the organization in such a way that he allowed people to be on the board who would be hostile to him kind of being this freewheeling personality who does whatever he wants and spends the money however he sees fit. And, um, and when those two groups of people butt heads, the talent loses if, you don't, if, you have, if you've created a board that is, yeah, you know, that's, that's, the, that's suits, the way that's the, the corporate law. Cookie crumbles. We saw this with WeWork, and uh, we saw this just recently with the SBF situation. Oh, sorry, not the. As part of the SBF situation, um, there was the effective altruism a guy who used to be um, the uh, Sean McElway. He used to be kind of yes. like a, a, sure. a polling data po data polling guy who was very pro uh, Elizabeth Warren in the last uh, election, who basically is being accused of. Uh, doing the straw donations for SBF, uh, basically getting people who don't 
have the funds to invest the maximum in a campaign to basically accept donations from SBF mm -hmm. or one of his entities so that they can beat the fundraising caps, uh, or sorry, the donation caps. So, you know, all of that, it, it, but eventually, Sean McElway, he's being embarrassed by the SBF relationship that kicked him out of his organization. Mm -hmm. Who knows if they'll survive because he really was the face of it. But I think at a certain point, you people feel board members feel or members feel that you simply can't go on and you're willing to take that hit. So I think time yeah. will only tell. James O'Keefe is so synonymous with Project Veritas, but we'll see how it turns out. Obviously, unfortunate situation for that organization. We'll continue to follow that and we'll have more rising right after this. <laughs>